very good afternoon to you guys and welcome back to the Yale in WPA Men's World 8 Ball Championships from the Claude Lands Event Centre here in Hamilton, New Zealand. 64 players competing for first prize of 75,000 US dollars with a total of a quarter of a million up for grabs. Our next match is a loser side match between Poland's Wojtek Szewczyk and Taiwanese Yi Chia Chen. Joining me in the booth for this race to eight all the way from Canada, one of Canada's finest, Eric Horlifson. Hi, Eric. Hey, Mark. Pleasure to be with you guys again. Exciting match coming up here. You're sounding good, mate. You're sounding good. Looking forward to this one as well, mate. I don't think we've done that many uh, matches together. I think we did a couple together when we were in person. I think in Puerto Rico, maybe, rings a bell. Yeah, I remember that was the last time. Yeah, it was only our second or third time working together, but it's a pleasure to be with you again. Yeah, so how'd you see this one going? I mean, Shevchik, it's a loser's side. He lost in the very first round on the hill to his fellow countrymen, came all the way to New Zealand and ended up playing his very, very good friend, of course, Matthias Schnigocki. Uh, Shevchek was a semi-finalist in last year's event. Lost a close one to Shane Van Boning. Hill Hill in the semi-finals. Yeah, the man breaking Chance off. Chance coming also. in. No, you go ahead, Mark. Sorry. I was just going to say, lost to Kenko Suzuki. And then to you and Ryan, he beat him 8-7. So how's the break looking? Favoring stripes here, particularly because of where the three is. Going to be very tough to pocket the three. 15's blocking the most obvious pocket. He's going to have to manage getting around the 10. If he can find a way to get the cue ball kind of inside the seven or moving the seven, That'll be kind of the key to this rack. 10 is available to the top left, but he'll have to kind of move the seven to open up the track for that. He's got a good angle on the 14 right now. Can start moving the cue ball over the left side of the table. I think he'll, it's tricky. He's hampered by the three. So it might take a couple balls to get over there, but we'll see how aggressive he is here. I'm surprised he didn't bump into that three ball, Eric, and you know, maybe give himself a little bit more room on the cue ball. It's kind of restricted queuing there, wasn't it, for him? But I think he's okay. Yeah, I think he tried to, just didn't get quite where he wanted. Looks like he actually has a shot at the 10 right now. A little too aggressive. Pocketing's too tough for it. Definitely taking a think here, though, because he doesn't really... It's not clear whether he has all of the 12. I guess he doesn't, so he's going to take the key ball here. This is the big shot in this rack. Yeah, this is huge. If this goes, you fancy him to get out here and take the opening rack. If it doesn't, it's not there. Quite some distance away. Got lucky with where the 10 ended up. Tied up the 4 for Chen. Chen does have six solids to try to maneuver and open up that four. I'd favor using the one. Two and the five could be a bit of an issue as well. Looks like he's just going to back off here, opening up the five on the first shot. Not bad, he's but right. a little negative there. Yeah. Yeah, I must admit, I expected him to go a little bit more aggressive there. I mean, he's left a shot here for Shevchik. Okay, it's not easy. He's covered the easy one in the side, Eric, but this 11 is on and he's digging down on this. So he's going full out aggressive on this one. And if this goes in, well, of course, then the 10 is his problem. Stroke there from Shevchik and coincidentally, I mean, he's right on the 13, can come across for the 10 right now to break out the 10. So yeah, a bit of a d defensive play that might not work out for Chen here. Chef check still has to open up the 10. 
That's unlucky. Went into it nicely, just didn't separate them properly. I was just about to say it's the perfect explanation there of sometimes going aggressive is the best form of safety. I was wondering if he might live to regret this, Chen, but it looks like he may have got away with it. Can he get through to the cutting angle into the side? No, he can't. So just a safety, Eric. So there's more pull to be played in this opening rack. Yeah, covered the three nicely there. Kind of took over the bottom right corner pocket with his stripe as well. Biggest issue for Shevchuk is there's not going to be any, there is no stripes near the 10, so it's very tough to manufacture another breakout. That's a good safe there. Yeah, really in an underdog position now. Anytime you're outnumbered like this and one of your balls is tied up. Trying something really aggressive here. Kick bank. Yeah, it owns up to the foul. The way through. Didn't see where our referee was. I'm a little bit surprised the referee wasn't right in close up to that. He may be because we can't see the whole arena, but normally you see the refs right over the table, Eric, don't you, for that type of shot? Yeah, it was going to be a close call. Right call was made in the end, but I, I hear you for sure. Six has got to go before the seven here. One's got to go before the two. Typical eight ball play. opening up pockets so all balls are available to the most obvious pocket. It's on the six. Next order after that will be clearing out the one so the two goes in the same pocket as the six and the one. This is a first round loser side match mark, correct? Second round loser side. Uh, it's, I believe it's second round losers, Eric. Yeah. yeah. All players on the losers, losers round are trying to make it back to the final 16 single elimination portion of the tournament. So two more wins after this one will be required to advance to that stage for these players. We are streaming two tables, much. guys. All week, we're streaming two tables on YouTube, and the one on offer at the moment is the Kaiser Ralph Suke. It's up against Nukio. It's a bit of a mouth-watering task as well, isn't it? It's a loser's round match as well, yeah. Yeah, same as this. Yeah. match. It certainly is. I'll be keeping you up to date with a few of those scores, guys, as they develop. Meanwhile, back to this one, Eric. Looks like he's going to run these out. It's been chopping and changing, hasn't it, this rack? Both had good chances. Yeah, kind of a margin call there from Chen early in the rack to play safe. But, you know, as you guys are watching at home, if these players aren't 80% sure they're going to run out, they're not afraid to play safe, I think, you know, something that amateurs do they just kind of go full bore at the run out even if it's very tough but something to watch over the week is kind of these players recognizing that maybe the, the run out is tougher than it really looks on the table and they're and they're trying to get into a spot where they're 90 percent or more to run out it's interesting stuff yeah certainly is i love a bit of eight ball now some other matches i'll just take you around the room so you know what's going on guys torsten homan the hitman is 2-0 up against Kurt Dunham. This is all losers round matches. An all Japanese affair between Masato Yoshioka and Hato Hijikata. It's Yoshioka that's taken the opening one there. Ruben Bautista is up against local New Zealander Hassan Abdallah. 
Dennis Grabet, who had an opening round defeat to Darren Appleton, is 2 0 up against Gerson Martinez Boza from Peru. Andre Emil Gangflot is 1 1 with Daniel Maciel. Now, I was talking with Chris Reinhold on our last match, and he was saying Daniel Maciel is one of his favourites to maybe go all the way and surprise a few people, Eric. Yeah, we did one of his matches yesterday, and he played pretty much flawless. I think he had about three breaking runs. Never really made a mistake while running out. Played very well. Uh, he's, he's showing some real good promise in the last three months, finishing in the semifinals of the European Open. Been a strong up-and-coming player for a while now, really just kind of, kind of coming into his own. So, yeah, look for him to be a threat. Break is always so important, even more so. In eight. Would you say it's more important in eight ball than any other game, Eric, or is it just equally as important as most? I'd say it's more important because you're almost guaranteed to get a shot on the first ball. So, you know, if you're playing rotation, the chances of getting a shot on the one, who knows the percentages, but let's call it not more than 50, probably, probably less than in some cases, depending on the stipulations, but eight ball, you're almost always guaranteed a shot. So, yeah, it's a bigger it's a bigger play than in rotation for sure. Good chance here. A couple of little, they're not problems because as he makes the twelve, the thirteen becomes available into the other pocket, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm wondering if the if the combo is lined up to the bottom left as well. If he has that, if he has to end up taking that option, but if it's not, he can still play the 12 in the bottom right and then switch over pockets for the 13. Yeah, he's going at the bottom right here with the 12, but he's overhit it. Too far to be Does wanting to be in. cutting it in. Has the insurance ball though, the nine ball, so can clear the top. But you don't want to be leaving it till last, do you, Eric, to come down if you don't get position on it like he didn't just then. Maybe he'll try again here, will he? I yeah, was tried sure, so I didn't call it. Yeah, he got there now. Good stroke there. Oh, don't don't worry about being wrong, Eric. I'm wrong all the time. Don't worry about it. He had <laughs> another insurance ball there as well at the 14 over the corner. So it's worked out absolutely perfect. This That was a really nice stroke, wasn't it, from Shevchik? Yeah, finishing in the semifinals in the World Pool Championship. He's had some great results on the... In Predator events as well, winning former World Tan Ball champion. Yeah, back in really an under radar. Wasn't it? Yeah, under the radar, world class player just kind of goes about his business, stays quiet. But you can see in his form, really no flaws. Knows how to win as well. Yeah, just thirty years old yesterday. Family man, with a a daughter. That is away, trying to earn the bacon. Really staggering how many world-class players Poland has produced over the last 10 years. Probably bordering on being close to 16 world top competitors now. Yeah, and everyone for a few years was always looking at Viktor Zelensky, weren't they? And, and the butcher. Mezko Fortunski, but it was this man that kind of won the big one, but they did the double, didn't they? Because Zelensky the same year, wasn't it the same year that in Vegas that he won the Las Vegas Open as well, Victor? Yeah, well... I think there was a Poland par double. Pardon me, Mark, sorry. Um, he won the Las Vegas Open two years in a row when there was 256 players in it. Imagine that. So, yeah, he probably did win it the same year that Shevchek won it. So did you manage to see any of the ladies' matches at all, Eric, or were you getting ready, prepared for this one? I didn't catch any yet. I was I was teaching a little bit this afternoon, so uh, 
what's the what's the scoop there? They they finish the round one winner side. Our first round of, um, of the tournament. Yeah, they've they've done the first round. Uh, Brittany Bryant went through straight sets. Uh, Sakura Muramatsu went through against April Larson, 2-0. Siming Chen back to great form. She won in straight sets, as did Han Yu, Rubelin Amit as well. There's a couple of games still going on there. Emily Duddy 1-1 and 3-0 up in the deciding set. And also, Yvonne Ullman Hebler is 1-1 and still going back to this one chef check to break he's one nil yeah the score is wrong at the moment guys we'll get that sorted out for you unlucky That's with the cue ball one, here one. probably gonna have to play safe behind the two might have the 14 just one more quick note on the women's event. I noticed uh, Shasha Liu is in the tournament. She hasn't really competed on the world stage in over five years. I actually was searching earlier, just seeing if she had played at all. And I, I noticed that she finished the final of the, of the Women's China Open. So maybe a name that people yeah. kind of forgot about, but definite world champ, former world champion and great player. Yeah, I actually commentated on that final. It was against Han Yu. Han Yu was victorious there. And she was victorious as well this morning, Shasha Liu. She's beaten another Polish lady, Olivia Zaluska, by two sets to zero as well, Eric. So, yeah, good call on her. Along with 10 to 15 other real strong world-class women's players. So that's going to be an exciting tournament. Just kind of jockeying for position here. Can't see if he's left the 14. I have a feeling he has. Yeah, he's called it. Right on cue. Yeah, right on cue. He called it. It was kind of like an echo. 14 in the side. Cue ball's going to be kind of loose here. Ideally, if you can run into the 14 and kind of rearrange the 14, or pardon me, the 12. Good shot. Didn't quite rearrange how he, how he would have liked. And in fact, I'm not sure if he has a shot here. I don't think so. Might have to play just safe up to the short rail. Apart from maybe, if I was in an exhibition now, I'd play the 15 onto the 11, onto the 13, onto the 10 in the side. That's what shot I would play and draw back. I see it. But of course, <laughs> this is a world championship. This is a world championship and they're pros. <laughs> I saw, we, we saw a four ball combo in, uh, in a, a match that I did yesterday. Oh, to really? Count how many balls were involved. A four ball combo, no joke. Yeah. And like they were kind of almost situated in the same place they are right now, fired in the top left corner. Good show. That's spooky. Chen's going to hope the six passes the nine. I believe it does. Seven's going to be the prop ball for him in this rack. It will pass to the bottom left if he's able to get the cue ball over on the right side of the table. Could look to do that off the four if he's able to slow roll the six in slow enough. Is it a game you play often, Eric? I know, I know it's pretty popular in Canada, isn't it, this? Yeah, it, it, particularly in my area of the country, we don't play it as much, but where I, where I grew up, it was say about 50% of the competitive pool was eight ball. So I definitely have some background in it. I enjoy it. Well, it makes you think more. Don't think this goes, does it? Or does it go in half the pocket? No, it didn't. That's why. Trying to make the 10 
a little less more accessible. Now, can yeah, he go? Can he draw into these, Eric? Off the fifteen, can he draw into those or not? I think again, they're just you know. Yet yeah, that would be the offensive play, and from there you'd have to develop the nine and the ten. So they're just kind of jockeying around a little bit. You know, I kind of wonder if if some of these players watching and, and playing Chinese eight ball a little more, where there's a lot more tactical play, if they've kind of realized like this is a, this is kind of a, a you know a different way to play eight ball. Like you don't have to go all in and try to run out all the time, right? Like jockey for position. You know. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of Chinese eight ball commentary just lately, and there is a lot more nudging balls around and maneuvering balls because the pockets are just so tight eric you know you can't be playing balls down the rail not with great ease you see very few players do that the the play there is to nudge balls out of off the rail so there's a lot of this kind of little safety chipping balls out and you know to in and throw in so maybe it's rubbing off a little bit took a chance there it's worked out absolutely yeah. beautiful. Look at this. Yeah, as long as the eight passes the four, he's a big favorite here. He's come around to look at it. He's kind of up to the run out pretty quick, so I, th I believe it does. Stop shot position play for the next three balls. What about the eight? Go into it here. I believe it goes. I believe it goes. I, th I think he's the way how how quickly he's up at the runout. I think he's just gonna. Oh, you're right, Mark. Just make sure. I guess maybe it didn't. Always better to be sure if you've got the opportunity to do it. Didn't compromise the position on the next ball, did it? So yeah. Why not? Such a good cue ball he's got, hasn't he? Yeah, hits the ball at a nice medium speed. Doesn't force the shots. He's got that technique, Eric, that not much can go wrong with it. You know, he's very solid, not too long cue action. He's very slow on the backswing. Yeah, not too long, but long enough. Like Kind of remin reminiscent of coping chung kind of that medium length backstroke yeah took the words right out of my mouth it's that kind of ilk isn't he not not like a jason shaw or a as compact as you know like josh filler for example but he's in the mid range as you just said kind of like the coping yi coping chunk And another pole. Oh, he's in pole position at the moment. We're talking about him just now, Eric. Miesko Fortunski is 4 0 up against German Stefan Kasper. And Stephen Holem, one of yours, is about to start. Just waiting for the table to become available. Stephen Holem, of course, from Canada. Well known, isn't he, Eric, for his eight ball? Well, don't remind me, Mark, he beat me in the final of the national championships for me to qualify for this tournament. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, but I'm not... <laughs> oh really? <laughs> no, no. no oh, it's all I'm good. I'm sorry about no, that. I, I didn't realize I'm that. Just... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I hope all the best for him. Yeah, and he he is probably the best eight ball player in the country. So we, we better than Jason. Well this tournament. Better I, than Jason? Jason's right up there. Right up there as well. Yeah. But that's saying a lot that it. Yeah, they're they're around equal. Yeah. Good break. I don't believe the five passes in the top left, so he's gonna probably favor stripes here. Bit of an issue with the ten twelve.
If he gets down on the nine and, and gets straight in on the nine, he'll be able to shoot the ten in the opposite corner pocket. This is, I guess the five passes. Who's gonna have to go before the four to open up the pocket or open up the pocket for the four seven, so he's going at that now. Good favorite to run out now. Just good position on the five so he can get nicely back for the four seven. Could even take the First five ball. last. First ball he looked at Eric after the break was that three ball. And the camera angle was right on it at the time, and it does go as well to the top corner so no problems here seven ball first in the four could even go up for the three here Eric what do you think yeah it's just preference depending on what angle he gets eight balls pretty open Staying in good pace here. You can tell he knows the game well. Forget, for, for you, those of you watching at home, it's, they're, they're playing under a 30-second shot clock. And, you know, just commenting on one thing Mark said there, you know, is, would, he, would he take the four or the seven? You know, if, if you start overthinking like that and you get down to the end of your shot clock, it's not going to be beneficial in the long run. That's how you would play normal eight ball without a shot clock. I mean, like, you know, really think about the exact pattern you're going to run the balls. But playing a little bit on intuition here, I think, has some value. Yeah, nicely done. Once again, he's looking in top form. Had that little bit of a hiccup in the first round, as we said, against Shinigaki. But he's on the hill in the opening set of this losers round match. Now we've got more eight ball coming up after the ladies ladies are coming up next but then seven o'clock this evening from new zealand there's a few big mouth-watering matches coming up now what about this josh filler against daniel guttenberger from switzerland that's looking like a good one beta alawahadi against Wu kun lin and what about this one eric darren appleton up against albin ocean that's in winners qualification that's later on. Nice. And that is the feature match on table one will be Darren Appleton against Albin Ocean. The table two yeah, one's not I, looking too bad either. Alex Kazakis and Alex Pagulain, a couple of Alexes going at it. Very nice. I, I, I had Alex, as, Alex Pagulain as the dark horse for this tournament, actually. Uh, you know, he's been playing a lot of Chinese eight ball. It's one of his best games. He's competing a lot right now. And so look for him to maybe pull off a flashback moment in this tournament. Yeah, I heard you with Chris yesterday mention that, actually. I was listening. Three ball. Yeah, lots of action oh, on the rack this. there. Look at the Ten solids. Balls on the... Yeah. 10 balls on the far side of the table. It's always a good sign. You know, you're getting a lot of action out of the rack. Yeah, Darren was actually breaking second ball, which surprised me. I don't know if you saw his second round match at all, but in his first round out of the gate, he, was, he broke second ball the whole the whole match. I actually I saw a Facebook post of Edge about... Yeah. Yeah, and then I... I was commentating on a match yesterday and, and Ben said exactly the same thing. I actually missed the break. I was checking some scores and uh, Ben said that he broke second ball and he was talking about the eight moves towards the side pocket or something on that. Is that correct from memory? It can. Um, the eight's not a winner in WPA rules. So I, th I think it's more, he, oh, Miss Q still made the ball. Didn't get the position he would have had, though. Yeah, a bit of head movement there. Now, can he draw into 
the four ball here and give that a nudge or maybe even nudge into the 15 even better can he or is it a bit too yeah the natural angle is playing into there I think the natural angle is actually playing into there, so he'll, he'll consider moving it here. Just has to catch a small roll, hoping they don't tie up with something else. Well, I don't think. <laughs> you might put it there, wouldn't mind you, if you said, right, you can put the four anywhere you want. But yeah, Darren is another player with a lot of eight ball experience. And if he can get his break going, I mean, don't count him out by any means. And in fact, consider him one of the favorites. Yeah, he said on Facebook that he ran a five pack. That's what I so was he's doing. Uh, something, yeah, right? but, yeah it's, he didn't break and run a lot in his first round, but I did see that he said that about his second round. So. Be nice to see him do well. If you need to know anything, Eric, these days, you know where to go. Just scroll through Facebook for a couple of hours. You can learn everything you ever need to know on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Chef Chat just looking to get the proper angle on the key ball, which will probably be the four. Eight's only available in the bottom right corner pocket. Stayed down extra long on that. Cued it lovely. Good shot. Can come around three rails here. Play the angle between the 8-14. Well, this is a small window he's coming through here looks natural though doesn't it eric a little bit yeah, of left hand natural. spin on it beautiful queuing very very well indeed and it goes his opponent sat in his chair you just saw him there chen he's got some work to do somebody else another pole with some work to do radislav babica is 5-1 down eric to conrad musician he's leapt out the gates in that one yeah a lot of polish players in the tournament daniel massiel 4-1 up on emil andre gangflot grabe 3-2 up on Gerson Martinez Boza. Chef Czech's just got on a break here. Well, I think we better do the same then, shall we? Nip out for a, a minute or so, and we'll be back, guys, with rack number six. See you soon.
just while we're waiting, guys, for the players to come back, I'll just tell you a little bit about the format. It's an eight ball, of course, winner breaks, 64 players, 16 seeded, and it's double elimination down to the last 16, then it's single all the way. It's done on WPA rankings. Single, single elimination, there's new seeding, eight seeded. Reigning world champion is seeded number one, regardless of their current WPA ranking, but we don't have the defending champion who won in Klagenfurt back in Austria last year. And the eight remaining eight players are drawn randomly against the seeded athletes. Single set, race to eight, single elimination, and then races to 10. Back to this one, race to eight, halfway there, Wojtek Shevchik breaking off in control. Needs help, Eric. He's going to get some, is he? From the seven? No. no. Run out of steam. Run out of steam, mate. Yeah, Shevchuk, when he finished in the semifinals last year, went with this offensive kind of center attack attack line it's very it's it's dangerous once it gets going because it's going to spread the rack a lot more but conversely if you don't make a ball it opens the rack up a lot for your opponent i wasn't actually there so, commentating i was there doing a little bit of work some interviews and stuff for the wpa in Klagenfurt last year and i believe didn't shane van bonin break from the side the whole way through the event did he try center or so, was he breaking from the side I'm sure he tried a, a couple times, but the, the one that he stuck with in the end was the side. And I would say 75% of the of the players that did well were breaking from the side rail just to kind of guard against, you know, these dry breaks where it's kind of like a handover to your opponent, kind of making your opponent work a little more if they, if you don't make a ball. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's... The break from the center is tougher to execute as well. Like you have to be a strong breaker to even consider doing it consistently well. But even but it's, it's saying something that even someone like Shane went over to the side rail. Something interesting that he did there too is he put an extension on his breaker to get even more power. Like the some players that did well were really like hitting it 25 miles an hour from the side rail, just trying to keep the speed up to give themselves the best chance to fluke a ball. Little nudge into the three ball here to try and develop it. It's gone wrong. Yeah. Didn't catch it full enough. The other advantage of the side rail break is that you can make the head ball in the opposite side pocket as well. So that's kind of what they're targeting with that one. I mean, Chen can just leave him on the short rail here. Tough to cover the 12, 14, and 15, though. That's what he's kind of looking at. Oh, look at this creative shot. It's going to try the six off the eight into the corner. Just back cut it directly. Good try, Good narrow effort. miss. Everything open for Chef Check here, though. Having a quick look, making sure there's 15 passes it does. Nine plays well onto the 12. 12 only has one pocket. You will be able to get the cue ball in the proper place there off the nine. See, that was a prime example there, Eric. In Chinese eight ball, he would have been trying to move that 10 ball, but because it's on the American tables, you can just drop behind it. There's no problem with playing these down the rails. So there are slight little differences. But of course, the pattern's very, very important, as always in eight ball. So what's the, the play here, mate? 
I was actually thinking fifth. Oh, I forgot about the eight. Eight's up table. Yeah, nine, twelve, fifteen, eleven, thirteen. Just minimize I'm the cue ball movement when everything's in the open. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Has a good angle on this. Doesn't need to just stun off this, the back route up towards the 15, as you said. Yeah, just try to get close to the ball here. Don't have 100% of the pocket, so the closer you get to it, the more you can target certain parts of it. Wants it to slow up. See, he excels at these soft touch shots, which come up a lot in eight ball. A lot of European players have a decent amount of straight pool background too. Skills in that game lend well to playing eight ball at a high level. Yeah, they have a, a European Championship, don't they, every year for straight pool? Yeah, and I feel like it's one of the games that's kind of involved in their training programs. Predator now heavily involved in the Euro Tour as well. And you may have read the story that this contract has just been signed to be the table provider. They've been with Dynamic for a lot of years, but in 2025, they will be using the Predator Apex tables, the ones that we're playing on right now. So let's take you around the room to the other tables, out on table 16 Torsten Holman the hitman he's no stranger to eight ball whatsoever world champion of course five two up against Kurt Dunham the two Japanese going at it Masato against Hayato are level at two two Ruben Bautista is three two down to Hassan Abdullah Ralph Suke over on table one this is available on the other YouTube channel guys Nukioi five two up against the Kaiser there Dennis Grabet from Estonia is 4-2 up over Martinez Boda. Actually, Boza's just taken a rack there. It's gone 4-3. 5-1 up now, Massio. Your man going very, very well. But listen to this. Carlo Biardo is 5-3 down to Gao Jankui, who we had on this table yet yesterday. And that was the player that this man at the table breaking off beat. Let's go. 5-1. Got a little more pop on that one. Two balls down. As long as he's on the seven, this will be a positive rack for him here. Having a close look at it. So when you're building have... up to a tournament, when you're building up to a tournament like this, Eric, how long would you spend in a in general training session, you know, practice session, how long would you dedicate to the break? And would you break at the end of the practice session or would you do it at the beginning of the practice session Curious. yeah well sometimes I'll, I'll yeah i'll do i'll do something like um i'll try to break and run 30 racks over the course of three to four hours so if that means you don't make a ball you're gonna you're gonna rack them again like just looking at kind of you know creating something positive having that those thoughts in your mind that you can break make a ball and then run out right so you know, if I was if if I was in a three or four hour session, I'd probably break like 50 times, something like that, and do that as many times as I could in, in the lead up towards the tournament. Interesting. Thanks for that. Always nice to hear what you pros do in your preparation for a tournament such as this. And 
Like if you were playing rotation and you don't get a shot on the first ball, just rack them up again until you get a shot, right? So you might, if you were playing rotation, you were trying to break and run 30 racks, it might, you might break 60 times or 75 times, something like that. Sounds like hard work to me. I uh, like just switching the microphone. Easy. I just like to sw switch the microphone on and away I go. <laughs> <laughs> Staying in control well here. Gonna have to get on the five. Just a couple of balls in the way, isn't there, off of the four ball? I think he was playing for the four ball there, wasn't he? Because it was easier. Is it slightly easier to get on the five from the six? Is that what he would have I'd, preferred? I'd say so. Or is he okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, he was trying to play for the four there. Gonna have to play maybe a stun or some kind of draw back over to the left side of the table here. Just going to get through the 12. Nice shot. Great cue ball control. Tremendous fundamentals. That beautiful, watch this beautiful slowish back. He's got a couple of quick strokes that he does for prelims and it's all smooth and slow and purposeful. It's beautiful. 6-1, yeah, it's looking a little bit ominous. Yeah, he's thrown in a couple breaking runs now too, so threat to run the set out here. Chen's gonna have to take full advantage if he does get another chance. You mentioned you've been doing a little bit of coaching today, Eric. I guess it was in cornerback. Our friend Jim White and John White's place there, cornerback in Scarborough. It, Beautiful it was. place. I was yeah. In, yeah, I've been lucky enough to be there. So when you had your students today, were they beginners? Were they kind of experienced who just want to tweak a little bit? To, just run us through a little bit about what you go through in your training sessions. What do you think is important when you go through the training? Uh, I mean, you know, every every session's unique. Um, it depends how far along they are uh, with how many lessons they've taken. Just kind of have like a separate plan for each student, but definitely starting with the fundamentals. I mean, if you can't if you can't execute your stroke consistently, or if there's flaws in your stroke, there's really no path to getting consistently better. I mean, you you might you know you might have some days where you play well, or you might have can build knowledge where you can be improve a little bit but really a lot of it is at the beginning for sure is stroke work and just understanding the cue ball and how the cue ball moves today i was teaching elise actually so he you know elise my girlfriend she has a yes, turn yes i do has how's, how's our game coming on <laughs> she's she's improving all the time she's that, gonna come on play that's gotta be Canadian stressful amateur. <laughs> that has got to be yeah, stressful she... teaching your girlfriend. Come on. <laughs> no, she's easy going. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. We had a we learned a fair bit today. It was good. Well, you're a very laid back guy. One of the most laid back guys I've ever met, I think. <laughs> hmm. How's it looking? He made two stripes. I don't think he's got a look at one. What's he got to go for here? Yeah, not much opener on the solid, so he's going to have to start with the 13. 15, I can't tell what ball that is up top there, but the ball near the 8 can play into the 8 and open up the 8. Yeah, I think it's the, the 12 or the 15. I think it's the 12. No, it's the 15 then, because the 12 is by the 9 look. Right. So, yeah, just opening the cue ball up off that off that area where he's going to run into the eight. The nine would be the most likely ball. The 12 actually passes the four. So if you kind of play directly into the one off the rail, this is not easy though. Might be straighter than it looks. Well, 
use the two to combo it. Couldn't even see it. Good shot there from Chef Check. WPA rules: you can use a stripe onto a solid in the, when the table's open, or a solid onto a stripe. Can't use the eight as a neutral ball. Yeah, that's another difference to Chinese eight ball. You're not allowed to do that. You're only allowed to combo one of the same suit onto the other when the table's open. Yeah, he's helping up the eight nicely here. Looking for a second brick and run in a row. Third overall of the match. Oh, it's been a solid performance, hasn't it? Yeah, I think just that one very tough miss ball in the first rack, the 10 that he had to cut all the way up along the rail, that was the only ball he missed and never really got out of position and never really looked in trouble when he's running out. Just a real clinic here. I like to ask all the players, Eric, and I know probably what the answer is going to be because most players say the same. But do you prefer winner break or in a race to eight, I'm talking about, winner break or alternate? I think it depends on the game. I think it depends on um, the stipulations of how hard the break's going to be. You know, like in a, in a matchroom format, I'm okay with winner breaks because I don't believe that players are going to run a lot of racks at a, at a time. But it's breaking formats where it becomes really offensive, I, I don't mind alternate because it kind of guarantees you'll get a shot at the table. Yeah. Well, eight in a row here for Wojtek Shevchek. Shots, that is. And it now puts him on the hill, just one away from the eight he needs. He's looking solid, isn't he? Very, very solid. 2010 World Eight Ball Champion Chang Jung Lin is in action. He's taking the first rack over Sullivan Clark. Yeah, Chang hasn't had the strongest past couple years. Really surprising because he was a dominant top 10 player for a long time. I was actually talking to one of his best friends, you know, day before yesterday. And he's been playing a lot of the Chinese eight ball. That's why he's been dedicating the last two years, I was told, to it. But he just can't seem to make the breakthrough in that. This man. Yeah, explains why. Very, very yeah. well. It's hard to mix, isn't it, Eric? Sure. It's still swinging the cue, but there's so many little intricacies about every little game. It's... Oh, I think someone that does it the best is. Yeah. Alex Pagulayan does it very well. Plays all games. And just kind of shoots what's in front of him. But yeah, it, I, I agree. If, if you're not focused on one, probably take away from it can take away from the other. I said yesterday, I think that's one of the big things about why Chris Mellin doesn't do as well as maybe we think he should do. I mean, when he's on fire, there's few better players to watch him, in my opinion. But he's, he plays absolutely everything, and I mean everything. So it's kind of a, a jack-of-all-trades, kind of master of none. I mean, he's a great English eight-ball player. I can't take that away from him. But he is playing everything. Yeah, he just... I, I noticed that. I mean, he keeps himself busy, that's for sure. Right? I wouldn't mind his air miles, put it that way. Chen just looking to get on the two ball. Anywhere on the right side of the table will be okay for that. Don't mind shooting the five here and getting across for the two, but he's got other plans. I think he 
he's thinking about taking the two last, possibly, because it's kind of closer to the eight, and he'll be able to access the eight into one of the top pockets. I wonder if he was thinking of trying to break it out off of this one ball. I think that's what he might Maybe. be going for. Yeah, it's possible it doesn't pass the 15. Yeah, you're right. Open it up nicely. How's the eight going to land? Not good. Not, not great, no. Very sharp into the side. That's the only pocket he really has for it. It's always a danger, isn't it, when you're going into balls, Eric? You can never judge exactly where they're going. Exactly, and that's and that's why it's you know best advised to do that early in the rack. So if it doesn't work out perfect, you still have other balls to kind of maybe redevelop it or make a new plan where you can kind of deal with it not ending up perfectly. I was thinking about two seven five here, and then trying to manipulate the cue ball into the ten. But maybe he's thinking eight in the side. Or run into it now, like run into the 10 now. That'd be a good play. Yep. Yeah, I was looking to run squarely into the 10 there. Just nicked the left side of it. Can pocket the two, but the cue ball is real loose. Possible scratch as well. I mean, it's tough when you're in your chair for 20 minutes, too, right? He's been watching Shevchek break and run the last two racks. He's really stuck in the score line. It's not an easy spot to be in. But, yeah, it looks like Shevchek's going to take this match down. Strong performance here. Two more rounds back to the single elimination stage. A few to take, but they're all there, aren't they, for the taking, Eric? Yeah, maybe just shooting the 15 before the 10 to get to ensure that you have a full pocket on the 10. Not much else, though. Lots of room for the 10 as well if he has to end up shooting the 10 first. Too far. He's overrun this. He has. Looks like he has enough of the 10 to still pocket it. Just have to kind of settle his nerves here a little bit. Stroked it beautifully. Super impressed with his queuing ability today. Eric really has looked solid. Yeah, just demonstrating high level eight ball knowledge too. I mean, throughout the whole match, he never really felt like he was in trouble. Just playing the proper patterns, moving, minimizing the cue ball movement, good soft touch, clinical eight ball play. So this eight ball then to complete a loser side win. On goes Shevchek. It's the end of the road for Chen. I want to thank Eric Orlofsson. Thank you so much for joining us, Eric. I know you've got another match to do. That's me finished for the day. But you've got some great matches in the women's coming up a little bit later as well. Alison Fisher is on table 
two against Han Yu. You were talking about Han Yu a little bit earlier on. And listen to this for a game. On table one, Wei Xu Chen, it's Wei Wei against Siming Chen. That's coming up at 5 p.m. local time in New Zealand. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We've got eight ball action. We've got 